Yeah, so at this point, uh, I think it's probably like probably like I don't know, two thousand eight, sometime. I think when, when they started to investigate you. They started in two thousand six. Two thousand six. Okay. And uh, so you get a call from your lawyer, and and he wanted to meet up. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. He said, uh, "Come meet me on a, uh, on Restaurant Row on La Cienica and Wilshire right there. We met at the Many Honors." Uh, set and said, uh, hey man, we eat. He that little bitty on He said, hey man, uh, you got a cousin named Diane Baker in Dallas, Texas that you been sending PCP to? I'm like, what? I did him, you know, the Google was, what? You know what I'm saying? He said, uh, yeah, man, the FBI want to talk to you. I'm like, what? He said, man, the FBI want to talk to you. I said, man, tell them we're going to suck my dick. I don't talk to them. Shit, the next morning they was at my house. The very next fucking morning. Yeah. yeah. And what happened when they came to your house? Well, uh. They raided your house or did they just nah, come they, to your house? No, they, they, uh, they, uh, my wife was pulling off to go to work. He like, uh, they like, yeah, my wife was pulling off to go to work. And she like, uh, they told her, tell KPD to come down here. She hollered up the stairs, keep uh, the FBI out here. Like, what? She said, the FBI out here, they want to talk to you. I'm like, oh, shit. So I came down there. First thing they did was take the tracking devices off my cars. Right in front of you? Right in front of me. Like, damn. Because I, while I was in, in there for the 70 months, I was making my plan so they wouldn't ever get me again. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make sure, you know, they had upgraded their technology. So they was just one step ahead of me. Yeah. yeah. And they came in the garage, in your garage, and you guys started talking? No, uh, when I came out there, they was taking the tracking devices off my car. Okay. And what, they, what all did so, they say? So uh, they like, they, we just want to talk to you. And they said, if you hire ED4, we got to arrest you, that high price attorney. Then they said, call that dude, uh, call that dude from, uh, that you met at the restaurant. Were they in the house across the street too? Yeah, they, was, they had rented the house over there, yeah. yeah. And they accused, they said they had you on murders and everything. Yeah. But then, but then they was, they was like, he was like, I didn't do nothing. They were like, we know. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah, they, uh. I shut the garage down. <clears throat> I shut the garage down, and the little five-minute thing went off. So it oh, went pitch light. black. Scary motherfucker. I come back on the light. Them motherfuckers got their guns drawn. Scared to death. Like, man, I thought this was a booby trap. Oh, fuck. <laughs> then uh, the white dude was talking. Ooh, ooh. Then the brother looked me right in the eyes, gave me some street shit. I'm like, keep it D. You know what I'm saying? We got some shit that's gonna break your heart. And we got you on the gang of murders. I'm like, what the fuck? I said, I ain't killed nobody. Like, we know. Mm, so like they, were, they were like, we gonna frame your ass. Yeah. Either either way. We got your ass. Yeah. So uh, I called that lawyer, we went and met him. And they got to show me what they got. I said, I'm not telling you shit till you show me what you got. Took them a few days to show me what they got. They had our ass. And they had a lot of people caught up in this bullshit. They started showing you footage of but stuff? But they came to me for help. I didn't come to them. Can you take me through how you got Keith D to cooperate? <clears throat> yeah, it's the kind of typical investigative strategy where you get somebody to where um, you have leverage on them. And once you have leverage on them, you introduce the scenario to them and let them make a decision whether or not they think it's in their best interest to cooperate. That's essentially what we did. Built a drug case against him that was going to put him potentially in jail for the rest of his life and said, you know, here's your opportunity to mitigate that situation and tell us the truth about what happened in Tupac's murder or Biggie's murder, whichever you happen to be involved in. And uh, he agreed, as a lawyer agreed, and there was a formal agreement between the U.S. Attorney's Office and, and KPD's attorney and sat down and started the process of cooperating. 
and he enlightened us to the details as far as he knew them. I didn't come to them. They came, knocked on my door for help. Right. They did. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't come to them. I don't, I don't know why they just didn't do like like that. You know what we do? Just come take everybody to jail. You know what I'm saying? They came, knocked on my door for help. So, I, so after hearing all the evidence that they had against you, you left, right? And they gave you some time to think about it. Yeah, they uh, no, they just showed me a, they just showed me a few shit that day. A little bit. They showed me some crucial shit though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. And I told the motherfucker, man, all, all I'm gonna do is plead guilty in the first court appearance. And they like, motherfucker, <laughs> it's, it's over. You know, we're going to book you on a gang of murders. Like, okay. Uh, so they gave me the, uh, the day before Thanksgiving to January the 9th. Come okay. back with your decision. So what happened? You go back January 9th. Go back January the 9th. They showed me what they had. Yeah. Had the little, they, had, uh, they came out with a foul. And they still think that you're the one that killed Biggie, right? They said, yeah, they think, uh, yeah. Now, how come, why do you think the Keefe D has never been arrested? It's a very complicated prosecution, you know, based on the fact that so much time has passed. You know, we don't get that information until like 2009. Um, a lot of the witnesses and co-conspirators were dead. Uh, Keefe D's a convicted drug dealer, a known gang member. He's perjured himself before, so his own credibility will be in question and now you're taking his information and he has immunity in regard to his own confession. And so now we can only go after co-conspirators, all of whom die with the exception of Puffy. Puffy now is, um, you know, an iconic music figure with hundreds of millions of dollars and you're not going to have a very practical likelihood of prosecuting him based solely on the testimony of a known drug gang member, convicted drug dealer, ex-convict, and who has changed his story several times. So the prosecution in Las Vegas realizes that this is, you know, most likely never going to result in a, a conviction. Just don't have the credibility and the witness to bring this forward, and that's the problem with it. Uh, okay. So you had a proffer deal. So that means whatever you say during that day was like nothing yeah. could ever be used against you. Exactly. During that day. Yeah. How come you didn't ask for like complete immunity? I did. You didn't want to give it to you? I did. I'm sitting here. Well, the proffer deal is only good for What you said? That, no. Man, that's why I'm still sitting here. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you, you said you saved a lot of people from going to jail? Yeah. How many people? Lots. Everybody I was around me that was going to jail. 20, 30, 40? It was in the 40s. 